She presents with progressive breathlessness despite maximal medical treatment, including a llama, a lava, and intermittent causes of oral steroids. Her baseline FEV1 is 37% with no reversibility. Her baseline residual volume is 200%, which does predict a uh, good result from uh, endoscopic lung volume reduction. She underwent a VEDA assessment of her HRCT scan, which shows that the right upper lobe was 54% destroyed um, and the right uh, lower lobe was 41% destroyed. The left upper lobe and left lower lobe was more homogeneous. There was a complete fissure between the right upper lobe and right middle lobe, and as a result, we chose to perform endoscopic lung volume reduction of the right upper lobe. The differential VQ lung scan on 3D spec scanning revealed that the perfusion of the right upper lobe was 19%, whereas the perfusion of the right lower lobe was 36%. The ventilation of the right upper lobe was 18%, the ventilation in the right lower lobe was 34%. Given that the right upper lobe had the poorest perfusion and ventilation, this gave increased credence to performing the right upper lobe on endoscopic lung volume reduction, which was already suggested on anatomical evaluation on the VEDA study. Once the targeted lobe is determined, we then need to size the airways prior to the insertion of the valve. This is done with a specially calibrated balloon, um, which um, also serves as a sizing balloon. At the end of the balloon calibration, a special worksheet is created. This worksheet is used during the valve case to determine the size of the airways. When the balloon is inflated inside an airway and a complete occlusion by the balloon is achieved in that airway, the volume left in the syringe is compared against the calibration chart. In this instance, the volume left in the syringe is 390 microliters, the number which falls between 345 and 400 microliters, which is the range for a size 7 valve. In order to speed up the process of airway sizing, and keeping in mind that the majority of airways are size 7 or greater, I straight away inflate the balloon in RB1 to the upper limit of size 7, which is 345 microliters. I then check the fit of the balloon, and the balloon completely occludes RB1 segment, and it fits so snugly, but I can still move it in and out. Just to double check, I inflate the balloon to the upper limit of size 9, which is 155 microliters, but this is clearly too big for this airway, so I deflate the balloon back down to the size 7, which is 345 microliters, to reconfirm the correct fit. I then measure RB2 next. To me, this looks a little smaller, so I inflate the balloon to the upper limit of a size 6 valve, which is 400 microliters. This fits perfectly. Next, I measure segment RB3 and determine this to be a size 7 airway. Once the size of each of the airways to have valves inserted is determined, then the valve deployment catheter is inserted into the loading device and the valve is clicked into place. By depressing the plunger of the loader, the valve is compressed into the distal end of the toilet catheter. This catheter, primed with valve, is now removed from the loader and ready for use. In my opinion, appropriate lubrication of the valve catheter is important to prevent distal deployment of the valve. This is important in that it reduces friction between the actual catheter and the bronchoscope. The next step is determining the order of deployment of the valve in the appropriate segment. I generally like to deploy the valve in the most difficult segment first. I would also like to avoid the uh, removal rod stems crossing each other which could interfere with the function of the valves and thus I determine which segment to do initially to prevent these complications. In this case, 
the first valve at size 7 is deployed into RB3. The catheter is introduced beyond the target location and then drawn back into position using the yellow line as a guide. The yellow line serves as a guide to where the most proximal part of the valve umbrella is positioned and this should be along the line of apposition with the appropriate target area of the segment that you are introducing the valve into. It is important to position the yellow valve line a couple of millimetres more proximally to the desired site of the valve deployment because the valve's umbrella will settle slightly more distally over time. Once in appropriate position, I retract the catheter into the bronchoscope, leaving the valve in the airway. I elected to deploy the next seven valve into RB1. The segment is too short to accommodate the entire length of the catheter's tip, so the distal end of the deployment catheter naturally extends into RB1B. This is perfectly fine and simply means the anchors will end up in that sub-segment which will not compromise the valve's function or the position of the valve's umbrella. I deploy the valve and it includes the entire segment. One of the advantages of the spiration valve is that you are able to deploy anchors into a distal sub-segment which is not possible with valves that sit on the carina. As a result, a short uh, segment between the opening of the segment and the carina um, can still have appropriate closure with anchors distal in a sub-segment. I then deploy a size 6 valve into the remaining segment of right upper lobe, RB2. The catheter is placed with a yellow mark at the level of the sub carina and the valve is deployed without any issues. The valves are now securely in place and well positioned with no gaps identifiable around the valves umbrellas and the walls of the airways.